Uh, you could use a tablet technology to scan around and see what fasteners um, are, you know, are, are good, what fasteners might be bad, what assembly steps might be, have, have been skipped for whatever reason, maybe parts aren't available yet and those type of things. And then I think the other thing uh, that we see is not only combining, uh, not just using augmented reality in, in isolation, but using positional sensors and actually knowing exactly what fastener or what step is being done at which time. Hello, my name is Robert Schmidt. I'm Deloitte's Chief IoT Technologist, also known as Mr. IoT. I have a deep passion for all things digital. And today, I want to welcome you to Coffee with Mr. IoT with my guest, Pat Noonan from Arc Technologies. Pat, yeah, thanks welcome. for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me. What does Arc Technologies do? Yeah, good question. We have um, really two major thrusts that we've been working on. Obviously, we're here at NI Week uh, for this week, so we are. You worked for National Instruments for a long time. And I you? should mention that. Yeah, I've been. I've worked for NI for almost 19 years. A um, little bit of background: I was an R&D guy for about five, four or five of those years, and then I moved into sales, and then I had various other. Uh, roles for business development and things like that. Um, I moved to ARC about three years ago, and uh, what we do is a, a lot about test. So we do a lot of test, uh, final uh, uh, test systems, mostly circuit card testing, module testing. Uh, we're big in aerospace and defense uh, business uh, is our primary thrust. Um, but that's our one thrust, and the, the really cool stuff that we've been getting into lately is uh, error proofing and assembly systems. Uh, mostly in aerospace to prevent, uh, you know, um, mistakes and errors that happen in a manufacturing process. And uh, we have a product that we came up with recently called PVS, uh, which stands for Process Verification System. And uh, it's basically hardware and software, kind of like NI. They do a lot of uh, hardware and software combinational uh, uh, offerings as part of their solution. And that's what we do as well for uh, error proofing. So let's say you're in a manufacturing... So are you a competitor of NI now in a way? No, not really, no. Uh, uh, NI doesn't really get into the manufacturing and assembly process. Oh, okay. What we talk about when we do those type of uh, tools that we, that we work on, they're mostly fastening assembly tools. So think of uh, inside of a jet engine where you torque a, you know, 30, 40, 50 critical fasteners that are part of that uh, uh, assembly process. That's the kind of tools that we're talking about. Um, we also do some uh, manual assembly aids, I guess, and guides, so that we make the operator better at what they do uh, when they actually use a manual torque tool. Most of what we see in the industry right now are smart torque tools, where they have a sensor a transducer embedded inside of them to allow you to take a very critical you know, uh, torque and uh, sometimes an angle measurement along with it. So that, that, that's kind of the latest uh, and greatest generational thing that we've seen uh, in industry for aerospace and defense. Um, so yeah. when I, I'm an IT guy, so whenever I think of testing, I think of testing systems. Yeah. But you're actually talking here of testing uh, circuit boards, uh, testing assembly pieces, and you talked about assembly of uh, airplane yeah. parts. Yeah, right? there, so this is there's two separate thru thrusts yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. so, so the, the test system stuff that we do is... Uh, you know, critical for end of line testing to make sure a circuit card passes or fails a certain test to make sure it functions the way it is specified. Uh, we do that mostly so for- When we buy electronic pieces, they all get tested, every single piece gets tested out the door, or just parts of them? No, well, in a, um, we've done a couple different systems that test uh, some circuit card um, assemblies that are discrete, basically parts, and then they assemble them and they actually can create a, uh, a large module mm -hmm. that that that's consist of all those uh, circuit card assemblies or subassemblies, and then they can test different stages. So typically, in an aircraft manufacturer uh, that um, is doing an avionic system, we'll see them th those manufacturers test the individual circuit cards, make sure all the components are every good. single one that goes out the door. Every single one that goes out the door, and then they'll also do a module level test. So before they they ship the final product. Um, they'll actually ship and test that, that uh, prior to shipment. Now, what, one thing we have been seeing in, in the industry is 
a lot of monolithic uh, specialized chips, especially like with uh, you know defense contractors. So oftentimes those modules need to get tightly, tightly packed in a module. Mm -hmm. So one one innovative thing that we've done recently is a uh, a flying probe tester. Uh, we've combined a flying probe tester technology with functional level testing for the RF uh, industry. So if they can test RF signals uh, point to point, uh, and that's a new system that we've, we've developed. So most flying So you put the chip into something that flies around and you test it while it flies around. Yeah, though, no, the flying probe actually flies around uh, and usually those systems are just used to test like uh, discrete circuit components, like resistors, capacitors, uh, inductors that might be part of that circuit card assembly. So that's why it call, it's called a flying probe because it runs around uh, the circuit card really fast oh, okay, and, and, and actually tests the actual components at that level. But um, in some cases, you want to actually test functional uh, parts of that circuit card prior to integrating that into a large assembly. I, 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 in my spare time, I fly drones. Sometimes oh, on yeah. the show, I even have people fly drones. We didn't bring it today. But, oh, so I thought okay. when you say flying probe, I thought no. you put the chip into something that flies around oh, and you cool. test that. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. I, I thought of that as functional testing, but yeah. I understand what you're saying. It's different. That's probably a few generations away. Oh, because that's next generation. <laughs> you're going to take that now and put that into yeah. an no, idea. No, that's your idea. We'll let you, we'll let you fly <laughs> with that one. No, but on the, uh, yeah, so, so what we've done is basically take the next leap with these flying uh, probe technologies and do and basically allow you to do functional testing with flying probe technologies. There's a couple good uh, partner companies that we've worked with. Uh, Huntron's one of them uh, that actually is an NI partner that we've utilized some of their technology for that. So that, that, that's really innovative stuff that we've done for, it makes their products better that come out the door for these big, um, you know, defense programs. Got it. Yeah. So I spend a lot of time in uh, with industrial uh, clients of mine, we yeah. do a lot of um, sensorizing of shop floor machinery and so forth. Oh, yeah. And so uh, sensors have become really a big part of all we do. I love sensors. Particularly yeah. sensors that are actually smart. It's not just a sensor, but yeah. it has smartness on there and then you do like processing right there. Yep. Uh, where do you see all that going? Oh, that's a I great question. I mean, you question. get to see all this stuff before. You get to see it in design, right? Because you got to test it when it comes out. And then by the yeah. time I see it, you're kind of like, oh, you've moved on to the next generation. So tell me what you're testing now that I haven't seen, I yeah, guess. The, yeah, so the bleeding edge stuff that, that's coming out. So really one of the coolest things that we're coming out with is, um, again, not so much on the um, automation of a factory assembly line, but on more of the tooling side. What we're coming out with right now is utilizing the smart uh, assembly tool technology, the ones that have transducers in them uh, that allow you to do torque or they can they can detect um, you know um, different assembly steps that are happening uh, as an operator is running. They could be manual and they could be uh, fully automated systems. For the jet en engine industry specifically, we've come up with some really innovative technologies to get into really tight uh, nooks and crannies of the engine. Uh, the web of the engine and actually torque the fastener in a in a, a you know very precise way. That does require a lot of sensor technology uh, and precise motion control and vision technology to get inside of those tight spaces. Um, and I think that's you know that's really where some of the industry is heading. So combining smart tool technology, combining innovation in mechanical electrical design, and allowing the operators to do more. A lot of our, our successes have not been fully automated tools where the operators are, are hands off. They actually have tactile fee feedback mm -hmm. where they can actually adjust the tool, <clears throat> visualize what's happening. And uh, you know, I don't you know, I don't know what a jet engine goes uh, goes for these days. I haven't bought one recently, but I'm guessing <laughs> 20, 30, 40 million dollars a piece, you want to be very careful about how you actually uh, operate within that engine. Um, and, and we know that firsthand that you want to be very careful. And, and so using that plus some of the really innovation in augmented reality, I think those two things are going to be really key going forward. And we, we've dabbled in augmented reality. Uh, in fact, we're doing some dem demonstrations today uh, at NI Week. So. I showed today um, as part of the NI Week's keynote our uh, rubber duck factory, which is an augmented reality version of a real client showcase. Um, what do you use augmented reality for? Where do you see the benefits in your field? Yeah, there's there's kind of one big benefit that we see is in the error proof or mistake proofing area of assemblies. So again, you have a critical fastener on a truck or you have a, a, a set of fasteners on 
uh, a part of an aircraft that need to be torqued or fastened in a certain sequence. Um, what we've done with augmented reality is combine um, headsets. So we actually have done a lot with the HoloLens. I know they're coming out with a HoloLens 2 later on this have year. Have you got to play with HoloLens I, 2 yet? No, we want to get our hands on one, but we haven't yet done that. Not many people have is my understanding. So We uh, tried actually oh, yeah. uh, for one of our shows coming up, but um, it's kind of hard to get from. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I've, I've been out to the, uh, the Microsoft Reactor out in San Francisco, uh, and I know they did a demo, and I wasn't able to get out there for that one, <laughs> and I would have liked to have seen it. But anyways. So you're using headsets with... Um, yeah, and tablets. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think the headset industry, uh, that uh, really uh, application is really for operators, when they want to have a hands-free uh, methodology of moving around an assembly and actually performing operations to it. That's where the headset uh, kind of comes into play. Uh, the tablet comes into play, um, basically using the same kind of technology, but for inspection purposes. So after the assembly has been completed by an operator, uh, you could use a tablet technology to scan around and see what fasteners um, are, you know, are, are good, what fasteners might be bad, what assembly steps might be have, have been skipped for whatever reason, maybe parts aren't available yet, and those type of things. And then I think the other thing uh, that we see is not only combining, uh, not just using augmented reality in, in isolation, but using positional sensors and actually knowing exactly what fastener or what step is being done at which time. So if you can combine, combine positional accuracy with augmented reality, then you really have the best of both worlds. Then you know that mistake proofing and error proofing is, is happening because um, as an example, you could actually turn the torque tool off if you're at the wrong fastener position. So if the operator's at the wrong fastener, you know, you could set up like, hey, buddy, you're in the wrong fastener and actually disable the tool until they've hit the right fastener. So you, you can guarantee mistake proofing at that point. So we're working on some of that stuff. I have to say some of those highly trained technicians gonna um, be mad at me for this comparison now, but you know what I'd like that for? When I pick something up at IKEA and there come the assembly <laughs> instructions, I'd much rather have uh, the assembly instructions in front of my face than having to yes. go through the book. I think it come back, comes back together faster and that's uh, right. more reliable than what happens right now. Yeah, that you won't have. Do you think that's going to happen parts. eventually? That this is just going to be? I mean, people going to even I'm, I'm used IKEA as an example, but yeah. our regular day-to-day -day instructions so. are going to be augmented reality on a phone? I think it's a generational thing because you see a lot of the younger coming out of college crowd um, just being, you know, augmented reality and, and virtual reality is just kind of commonplace. Um, it's in a lot of, you know, you can download any kind of app that has a game on it. I mean, that's, you know, you, you probably understand the gaming thing. I, I want to bring that up to maybe a little bit later about uh, the Frisco thing that I found. But, uh, what do you mean? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I noticed in somewhere uh, I saw on a Google, uh, a Google Plus account that you had, you had a had title of Frisco. So I wanted to ask you about that as well. Uh, yeah, that was... Um... When I originally came to the States, I lived in San Francisco or near San Francisco and I had to pick a game attack on my Xbox and I picked the Frisco. Okay. Um, and so that's how I, that stuck around for a while. So. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's my yeah. personal nickname. They, my friends don't call me Mr. IT, but they don't call me the Frisco either. <laughs> it's a legacy. That's where that comes legacy from. Legacy tag. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of gamification going on and you're suggesting that this is a thing of the younger generation that they're used to game controllers and yeah. much more. But even the, even the, you know, experienced crowd, uh, comes in and they, you know, if they do have a serious uh, escape or a failure in the field, they do see the value of using augmented reality and sensor type systems to make their job better. So we, we've, we've gone into non-union shops, union shops. This technology has, you know, is being accepted in those shops because they, they see that it's making their jobs better and they're having more, you know, they're able to do more work, have better they all want better quality work when out the door. And so if with that in mind, using augmented reality and using these new technologies, I, th I think people get it. Um, now, the technology, you know, hasn't come, you know, along as fast. Oh, what are you missing? Well, I think lighter. Uh, light headsets. Li li lighter headsets. Uh, I think, you know, just uh, wider field of view if you want to, you know, if you could just wear a pair of glasses and have that augmented re uh, view in front of you, I mean, that, that would be the ultimate, even if you had to have the power pack somewhere else, because I think the battery technology, you know, trying to make that 
you know, um, long duration. Uh, right now, my HoloLens, I was out in the, you know, the floor for two and a half hours, three hours. It, 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 was, it was dead pretty much in, in that time frame. So having an external battery pack might help, but then you could still keep the, the lenses pretty light. Um, I think that would, that would be good. More image processing technology. Uh, figuring out um, a lot of problems th that we see in the factory floor are about uh, having reliable networks within a factory. Yeah. So if you want to so use, that, huh? yeah, if you want to use um, AI or other processing to connect those different devices, you have to have a reliable, uh, you know, a networking environment. So we've seen like mesh networking and things like that. That might be, you know, new technologies that might help that along. But uh, yeah. I, had, I wanted to ask you something, so I want to come back to the technician that works, or sort of the testing you do on jet engines and other parts where you make mm. sure it's cranked up, so forth. And I'm assuming what you were talking about was before it ships out and gets mounted on an airplane, but then there's all this maintenance part. Yeah. Are you involved in the maintenance of it yeah. too? Yeah, so the, those are the MRO shops, the maintenance repair operations, and, um, and they see the value of actually pushing this technology out to the field. So we actually have come up with, uh, I mentioned the PVS product. We actually have a PVS mobile variant. Uh, they typically don't have the budgets that, that the actual manufacturers have, but you could still scale that technology and give them error proofing and data collection that goes along with uh, those type of uh, assembly tasks. So when you break down an engine and make, you know, and, and, and replace parts and then and build it up again, as a passenger, wouldn't you feel safer if it? If oh, I was just gonna say, thinking of the last year and what's been going on. That's right. Uh, I, I do want that, and I'm sorry, budgets don't mean that much to me when that's right. uh, it yeah. comes to some of that safety. So I, I, exactly. So I think it, from a consumer standpoint, pushing down to the airlines, pushing down to the the manufacturers, you'll yeah. actually see more of that. I mean, the the technology exists. You know, it's in various forms depending on you know what level you're going. Uh, towards, but uh, at the end of the day, it, if it means more safety, more reliable products, I think the consumer will ultimately win out and get what they want. So. What comes into my head is the interesting question for me becomes how much of this is um, by choice and how much of this is by certification that's required uh, yeah. through a variety, I mean the FAA or something like that. True. Um, and uh, you know, take that technology and require it for some of the inspections. What's your thought on that? I, I, I don't understand all the regulations behind uh, and all the reasoning why, why one company would, you know, from a safety standpoint. I know there are certain fasteners and certain steps that the FAA or the... Has your stuff be approved by the FAA? Um, the the uh, manufacturer has to approve the process. And as part of that approval process for the tool, they have to qualify the tool. And so our tool has to meet certain criteria to be qualified. So do we actually do the tool qualification? We, we generally don't. Uh, we get it to the point where we show capability and, and show um, you know, the, the specifications that are met. And then the manufacturer takes ownership of generally the tool qualification, especially if it's critical fasteners. So, I feel like I know, we're I, just. I, I feel like we've just gone into danger territory, I, I, I and it's okay. I, I sort of like we're both kind of like uh, skirting around. I, I'm going to skirt around okay. it as best that's as possible, okay. but yeah, you know, no, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, you very technical guy. What do you do at home? What, what's the cool stuff at home that well, you have, have when kids. you run all that testing stuff going on? Yeah, I, I have a you home. You test as equally as well at home when you crank up the IKEA cabinets? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I, I do like to break things apart and tear them down and see how things work. And I push that. I have kids, so I push that down to my kids and I, you know, like, like them exploring how technology works. Um, what, one of my sons actually is programming in Unity now, so he could be doing some of this oh, wow. stuff you know, next year, you never know. He's a sophomore in high school and he's doing Unity programming. So, and that's actually what we do to program the HoloLens. So it, you know, there's that natural, you know, a kind of flow of things. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of what, I, I, I like to build furniture, I like to build things as, just as much as, as anybody, so yeah. I got it, so yeah. in terms of the coolest technical gadget you've brought home, what would your son say it is? Well, I. I I usually show them what I'm doing. I'm like, here guys, here's kind of like what, what dad's working on lately. The, the latest stuff is the positional sensors, uh, uh, actually tracking through uh, sped, uh, broad, sped spectrum RF and accelerometer technology, uh, tracking a tool in 3D space. That's kind of cool. So, and you're tracking that through what? Uh, a special uh, broad 
band uh, Wi-Fi uh, radio signal. Um, and so it's also, not visual. No, actually, the whole Hall ones too uh, claims to have some uh, additional visual uh, uh, capability as well. So uh, we're looking at kind of using combinational technologies to get you better accuracy, more reliable position tracking. Because I, can't, I think if you have very accurate positional tracking where you yeah. know where each fastener are within an inch or so, combine that with error proofing and augmented reality, I mean, that's, you know, in, in total, that's a really good place to be in. So, so yeah, I have my little home lab that I'm, I'm playing around st with stuff every day. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Anything... Um, I haven't asked you yet, sort of like sometimes I wonder, did I go uh, into enough areas? Curious what your thoughts were. I mean, I think the other thing that I see, uh, I like augmented reality just because of, I've always had a, a, a passion too for image processing. I don't get to play in that space as much as I, I probably like. We, we do mostly the sensor, torque, smart tool um, type projects. But I would like to get into more uh, image processing. I think image processing can go a long way, you know, through the HoloLens, shape detection, image detection, facial recognition. I mean, there's a whole new new generation of stuff that that as those devices get more capable, I'm sure we'll get there at some point down the road. So that's a little bit more, you know, in the future probably for our company. Uh, right now, you know, the real application area is is where the rubber meets the road with actual you know assembly operations. So. Where yeah. are you going to go to NI Week this week? What are you most looking forward to? Uh, well, I like to connect to people. Uh, I like to see all, old friends. all my old friends and all the old, because I, I used to work in R&D, so it's nice to see some of those old, old uh, friends that I Are they that still to... telling you all the stuff they're working on? Or they no, stopped telling no, they're, you? they're, they're pretty tight-lipped, which I, I respect. <laughs> uh, I know they're working on pretty cool technologies, that, and, and NI always has great, great new innovations. And, uh, you know, I mean, it started out with, you know, tying signals back to a PC. Now we're tying back signals to a headset or other computing devices. So it, it's pretty interesting stuff that everybody's working on down, down at NI Week. I always love to come back. Well, Pat, thank you so much for being oh, here yeah. with me. Yeah, it's great having pleasure. you. Yeah. And with that, we're closing out another coffee with Mr. IoT today. Uh, thank you for being here. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe up there in the corner and you can watch, uh, rewatch today's show or any past shows you missed in my YouTube playlist. And with that, I'm going to say have a great day. Thank you. Bye.